YouTube faithful, what's going on? It's been a minute. No video on Friday and no video on Saturday? My oh my. That wasn't by design. Sorry to leave you guys hanging for week four, but I had to come on here Monday and give you guys a video, a third and yarn segment for the Monday night doubleheader. Absolutely. I hope you guys had a great week four weekend. Personally, I had a great week four. I had a sweat to win $25,000 and should have locked up at least 20k with the potential to win 120k and I fell a little bit short, but it is what it is. That's the life we've chosen. DraftKings is like that, boys and girls. That's why I suggest you guys get on there. But today we have two Monday night football games, a double header again. The primetime games have been absolute poverty. I won't begrudge you there. I will not deny the fact it's been absolute trash. But hopefully, possibly, maybe tonight the trend bucks and we get a good double header. And at least with that Lions game, maybe we get a good one there. Maybe we get two bangers. That would be optimal. That would be great. So before I keep going, I just ask you guys, please please leave a like and subscribe. It does help the channel. I know you guys hear this from all the content creators and all the nonsense and all the BS, and I know it tracks and everything else, but guys, just like the video. It's free content, helps me out, and I'm doing the Lord's work, and then you can be blessed to be a blessing, and so goes the cycle. So, let's talk about it. We got steps here, and the first thing we're going to do is go to DG Fantasy, my partner, which you can still sign up for 35% off with code CRUSH35, or for the month-to-month -month package, code CRUSH to get 25% off your first month, but we are going to go here, and we are going to go yarn, because we're going to be looking, and cooking, and baking, and taking any value we can find, and right out of the gate, you see Amonra St. Brown, his reception line's at 7, it's 7.5 on FanDuel, now I am fading under seven because I took over six and a half. Now, if you wanted to take under seven on a sports book and you got it in over six and a half on prize picks, that would be fine. But you could scroll down here. They do are putting some stats up for the later games this week, but you could see Tyree Kill under four and a half receptions is kind of popping. Minus 144 on FanDuel, minus 125 on Pinnacle. That is something that you might want to be interested in. Kenneth Walker, we are going to talk about him. Over 12 and a half rush attempts. That's absolutely interesting. David Montgomery under fantasy score. David A-Chain under anytime touchdown. Let me tell you guys, those anytime touchdown props have been absolutely painful as of yesterday. I know I made a lottery ticket. We like to have fun in the court. We make lottery tickets here and there. A full eight man of anytime touchdowns, and I think only two hit and the rest busted. I mean, absolute crazy, but that's what we're doing. We're taking demons. We're gambling. We got the Hopkins and Tyree kill combo at 89.5, which yes, Watts brought to my attention. It did get bumped from last night. Yes, I will give you that. Okay, Jason Sanders over one and a half field goal. But you could see the point is, is there's not a lot of value here. We're, remember, we're looking for 54.5% or higher. But another thing you can do is set it to the DFS middling tool. And then you can go see where it is on all the pick'em sites and you can get the best value. For example, Tyler Huntley over seven rush attempts on prize picks. You could take over there and then less seven and a half over here on better. And you can see that would be where you would middle the Bet. Same thing with Amonra, under seven, and then over six and a half over here. Okay, always check this tool. You always want to have all the tools at your disposal. Same thing here with over two and a half here and under three here. This tool can help you identify any value across all the pick'em operators, underdog, pick six, parlay play, all that stuff, guys. Jared Goff, over 33 pass attempts. He's 34 and a half here. That would be perfect. Over 33 and under 34 and a half here, you could actually cash both. I think that's actually okay. Over 12 and a half rush attempts for Kenneth Walker here, under 13 and a half there. You see where I'm going with this? So make sure you use this tool. I use it every day. It's the first step of the process. So with that out of the way, let's go look at this combo and dissect it a little bit more, okay? And I am going to talk about DraftKings later on in the video, but first I'm going to talk about some plays. Hopkins and Tyreek Hill. Now, here's the thing. Both of these quarterbacks are hot garbage. We don't know what to expect from Huntley. We haven't seen him in action just yet this season with this group of fellas. But we know we got Hill, we know we got Waddle, we know we got A-Chain in the mix. We got a talented backfield. Now, guys, sometimes it doesn't matter who's in the backfield leading the helm. If you have that type of talent, maybe you can get it done. But it is going to be something you're going to have to have some concern about, okay? The Tyree Kill side of it, his line is 51.5. I still believe this is a little bit too low. I do not care about the game September 22nd or the 12th or even the 8th when he had 130 when they had Tua. I don't care about any of that. 51 and a half 
receiving yards. He is their number one receiver. He's one of the best wide receivers in the league, and he can break that open any day twice on Sunday. All right, now with the new quarterback situation, I wasn't interested in the backup they had. I, I know he's hurt now, and this is their third option or whatever, but with all that out of the way, we just have to deal with it, guys. I mean, Tyree Kill can go over 51 and a half receiving yards any day of the week. Now, his receptions at four and a half, I do think that would be a fine less candidate because I don't think he's going to get a bunch of short receptions because his A dot is usually high. I don't think he's just going to get peppered with 10, 15 yard targets like that. I really don't think that's what they're going to utilize him in this situation. So I do think 51 and a half would be okay. But because I can't trust the situation, I do like putting him with Hopkins because it gives him a buffer. Yesterday, I used this strategy in two different situations and it paid off handsomely for me. And I will show you that momentarily. But remember, guys, it's still early, so these quarterbacks are still getting used to things. The preseason means nothing. It's We're in real game scenarios now, but if you go over to Hopkins, right? Let's find his receiving yards. Where is it? This is receptions. Where's the receiving yards? There it is. It's right out of the gate. So DeAndre Hopkins has still got it. Now they're passing on 63% of the plays. They're not, they're, they're not allowing a lot of passing yards per game. The Dolphins are actually a good defense. Believe it or not, their defense is good, but look at the target share here. Okay. 16 targets, 14 targets, 14 targets, and then 10 targets. He's only getting 11% of the target share as of now with week three, but this changed last week versus Green Bay. He finally got the targets. Now, let me show you something real quick, okay? Remember, it's still early. Week one, two, three, it means nothing, okay? They're still getting used to each other, knew everything, but look, okay? One target versus the Chicago Bears game. That's not normal. Two targets versus the Jets. Again, not normal, and two tough defenses, and now they're playing another tough defense tonight, but look what happened against Green Bay. He got seven targets, and he got six receptions. This tells me that he still has what it takes. One target, one catch. Two targets, one reception. Six seven targets, six receptions, which tells me that's on the quarterback. This isn't on Hopkins. So if he does get peppered with targets tonight, he absolutely can get 50 yards, 40 yards, whatever his prop is, he can get it. Okay. I'm telling you guys, it's all going to come down to, is he going to get targeted? His average yards per reception was 12.2 the other day, nine and then eight. That's not him. He's literally somebody that does have a dog in him. Believe it or not. I know he's late in his career, but still we're talking about D hop here. He's on my season long fantasy team I mean I drafted him late I picked him up listen I believe in him if he had a, a better quarterback this wouldn't even be a, a, a this would be the lock of the century over 37 and a half for D hop I'm telling you guys he can get 40 to 50 receiving yards it's just a matter as if he is he going to get that target share that he got for screen bay and I think they're going to do that so when I see this combo here at 89.5 I just assume all right well one of these guys can both get 100 yards and carry by themselves Hopkins could get it. Hill could get 100 yards. Their quarterbacks are garbage. I'll be the first one in line. Captain Grudge, I'll be the first one. Yeah, yeah. Their quarterbacks are not optimal. We're not arguing that here, fellas and ladies. We're not arguing that. But we just need them to have one good night. And I do believe that Tyree Kill can get 52 yards any given night, regardless of who's back there throwing the football. I mean, at the end of the day, they're still NFL quarterbacks, y'all. Okay. And same thing with D-Hop. I think he can get 40 to 50 yards any given night. They both have 100 plus yards ceiling. I mean, Tyree Kill's normal prop line was like 95 yards with Tua back there. His normal. Now you get a combo and it's at 89.5. So I will have exposure to this. I'm not saying it's an anchor candidate or anything like that, but I do have have it in a two man and in a five man and I do feel good about it and listen if the game script goes our way where we get into a shootout situation probably won't happen to be honest but then I'll be really feeling good about it but you could see two and a half point spread but the over under is absolutely abysmal which is why the lines are low so this you want to have low exposure you want to have low exposure to this game automatically guys but specifically I think this is okay remember we're dumpster diving through this particular game luckily we have a double header but I did want to mention that to you guys and in a addition to that, I do think his rush yard demon is in play because they do dial up a lot of jet sweeps for him. I've seen it. I know they can do it. He's done it his whole career. If you wanted to take a shot on over half a rush yard, you can. Absolutely. I could see him getting a jet sweep 
100%. Now, is it a total gamble? Of course, man. Of course. But this is my, see if you can follow my train of thought here. Now, it's a demon line for a reason. I believe they just bumped hills to 53.5. I could have swore it was at 51 and a half earlier. Maybe I'm tripping y'all, but anyways, okay. So follow my line of thought. And remember, it's a demon payout. So let's just say you paired it with something like that. It's going to pay you 4.25x. And I will talk about Justice Hill in a little bit. But Tyree Kill is going to need to get involved in the offense, okay? They're, they're With a quarterback that they know doesn't have a great arm isn't willing to throw they may draw up some crazy plays like that more sweeps for him etc he's their best player they have to get him involved that's my line of thought to get him involved we could see more sweeps we could see more stuff out of the backfield and if i only need one yard my brothers and sisters in christ i'm gonna take a shot on it especially if you're giving me a demon payout so that's that is it an anchor? No. Is it a dart? You betcha. Limited exposure, but it's in the mix. Same thing with the combo. Now, real quick, while we're talking about Hill, Justice Hill last night had him over receiving yards, over fantasy, over rush plus receiving, and he smashed it all. The books are still undervaluing him. That backfield between Lamar, Henry, and Justice Hill is something to be reckoned with, okay? He's their change of pace back their scat back if you will and he does it very good you got the one two ground pound with Henry then you have to worry about Lamar's bootlegs and on top of that you got to worry about Justice Hill getting screens running up the gut halfback stretch he's absolutely in play his receiving yards at 19 and a half is a hundred percent in play if you want to go ahead and lock that in right now you could I would prefer his fantasy score his rush plus receiving yards but this is all we got right now so I still think it's okay they are going to throw him the football guys we've seen it they're throwing the football to Henry out of the backfield much less Justice Hill it worked last night like a charm against a 3-0 team they're not going to abandon it so if you wanted to go right back to it and lock it in now you can now the the thing is when you lock in something this early this may come down it may go up we don't know yet because there's no other books with lines out for it yet that i can see since the time of this video but i will say i will have exposure to him i was all over him last night pause no pause required and i'm going right back to the well especially in the Bengals matchup they're going to utilize that three man hammer with lamar hill and henry and they're going to absolutely crush souls so right there, you could get that in the mix. Now let's move on to the next play that I like today. I got two more for you guys. Jason Myers over one and a half field goals. Fortunately for me, I got this in at a normal payout, but now they converted it into a goblin. Now here's my thing with this. Detroit has a decent defense. They're always going to have a solid defense as long as Campbell's at the helm. But even with the Gobby payout, it's still only paying you 0.7 or 0.25x less. So I think it's fine. You can go right into there if you'd like. Now, if we go pull up the last 10 for Jason Myers, you could see they're willing to kick. It's not, it's a pretty much a no-brainer to go over two field goals on a primetime game. I always love the kickers. They're 16th in field goals allowed. It's it's not that great. It doesn't really mean anything, but he's exceeded one and a half field goals in six of his last seven games. It all comes down to are they going to get him attempts? Is he going to get attempts? But also you can see he does have a leg if you did want to take this this is a new one that this just came out this season if it was last season I haven't seen it but somebody just had a six man I saw it on the internet of all of these and it hit I mean this 48 and a half all they need to do is hit 49 yards one or the other and it counts and if you target two kickers that have absolute boot legs I mean, these are always in place. So either one of these would be fine. I prefer the one and a half field goals made, but if you did want to take the 48 yard plus, that would be okay too. The thing is with Bates, Campbell elects to go for it on fourth down a lot. So that's why I don't really like the fact that he's mixed in there with him, which leads me to the goblin. That's my line of thought on it. I leave it with your capable hands. I come on these videos and try to just get your guys' thoughts and your feet firing and to give you guys some advice. At the end of the day, it's all about how, what you choose to do with it. You should never watch a YouTube video looking to get spoon fed. You should watch it trying to get your feet firing, your brain going, get you thinking about things maybe you weren't thinking about before or maybe confirmation bias and I, I give you something that you were thinking about and now my opinion puts you over to the edge and you lock it in a slip or in a DraftKings lineup if you will. Now real quick y'all, yesterday was a good day regardless, okay? I mean a lot of people got upset, a lot of people did their things, but but guys, at the end of the day, I cooked. And here's the deal. If you miss it, there wasn't a YouTube video. I apologize. But I had a live stream on Friday and I had a two hour live stream, just like every Sunday at 930 Central. I was right on time. It went all the way to 1130 Central where I literally am helping over 100 plus people answering questions, building slips, helping with DraftKings content, everything, guys. And it absolutely smashed. Okay. 
point blank. And I'm coming on here to show you guys exactly what was done. Now, the thing about my Discord that's different than other Discord communities and dub clubs is I aim to teach you guys how to think critically and get you out of the realm of just wanting to be spoon fed and tail the slips. Yeah, tail the slips, that's great and all. But don't you want to be the guy that's giving others advice and chiming in on the. I mean, what type of a human being doesn't want to be involved in the actual cook process? If you just want to eat, that's fine. And I totally get that. But guys, I take people who have little to no knowledge on the sport and transform them into contributing members into the process. That is my satisfaction. That is how I win. Okay. That is the beauty of what I do personally for my court. I provide all the tools and content I can. I give you my plays, my advice, and then I leave it to you guys to come up with what you come up with. And a lot of people had good weekends, man, because NFL is here and we are cooking guys. We're cooking. Okay. I had a full list of five with the full five write-ups i scrapped it because i i didn't like the energy in the air and it ended up going four for five with godwin the only thing that missed and then i put out another list that ended up going four for five and then in addition to that i made live stream slips at that 9 30 a.m live stream sports money says were all these posted slips and yes they were i made them on live stream with my community and then i went and posted them under captain slips which i will show you momentarily okay the proof is in the pudding now here we go this was the main four that i told y'all to tail justin jefferson and jay and read read carried that combo which is why i like these combos which is why i'm on that hopkins hill one today because like i said if either of the receivers have 100 yard upside and the line is 130 i will be i will be most likely taking it same thing with chase and johnson 135 yards we went with that Jaden daniels 1.5 it was a little too low unfortunately rice got hurt fluke thing but reboot will take the dub the pair i gave out for the free square kyron williams anytime touchdown 2.75 x book it cash it. The five man I gave out the first live stream slip, Darnell Mooney, Jaden Reed, Aaron Rodgers, Juan Jennings, absolute surgically. Romo Dunze sold, but he did have opportunity. He just didn't connect. It is what it is. If you mix and match or you take smaller slips like I preach, you would have done very well. Four of five, you need to find a way to maximize your return on investment, guys. But even here, it's 2x. Another one right here, same plays, added in another Caleb Free Square. I get, uh, got 4X for a 4X flex because Rice was ruled out. Rice was rebooted, cash that. The big three for the anytime touchdowns, Henry, Kyron, and Moss, cash that one. Gave out some WNBA. Bonner actually is green. She's no longer a push. This was 2X. Thomas, Carlton, Bonner, Mabry, Collier. I gave these to Brick, asked him to post it while I was gone. He did post it for me. This is another one, three of four that clicked. But the biggest sweat yesterday was my DraftKings sweat. As you could see here, I came in 10th for $1,000. I was in second place at one point for 10,000 and the Niners defense just went yarn and then Brian Robinson broke off an 18 yard run that gave him the 100 yard bonus and in addition to that gave him an extra 1.8 fantasy points to knock me down to 10th it was a hell of a sweat I should have took it down I made one mistake at tight end I needed to pair fields with Freymouth instead I had strange or I could have took it all down but that is the game that is why I play every week and I'm telling you guys I am going to hit that 100k because I play the same same contest every week and if i would have entered it into that contest this week i would have locked up 20k with this particular lineup because there's less people and more money but that is what it is i was busy doing live stream helping my community because i put my community first above and foremost iceberg tailed in cash you love to see it spartan had his slips tailed some cashed across all platforms guys it was a good day d ward cashed leon cashed he said he did his job today guys you can see the slips right here. If you were in that live stream yesterday, you cashed. If you went by the list, you cashed. It doesn't matter, guys. And in addition to that, I'm posting projections for the game that look just like this for every football game. Color coded for you guys. Make it real simple. Baseball as well, but we're taking a break from that since it's the playoffs. And then for you DraftKings players, I literally post the my favorite stacks just like this. Stack number two, Burrow, Chase, Moss, Johnson. That was a good stack. I tell you why I like it. Johnson went yarn. Moss was good. Chase did good. Burrow did good. I post it up. I tell you the runbacks. Okay, they're just to give you some 
ideas, but the most important part is I give you my entire player pool. Kyler Murray, Jaden Daniels, Justin Fields. I said my favorite for cash, 5,500 criminal low. This was the Millie Maker winning quarterback. Justin Fields right there. Caleb Williams, I said he was my vomit stack. Absolutely. Sam Darnold, Andy Dalton, Joe Burrow. All these quarterbacks did good except Murray, Caleb Williams, but that's to be expected, man. Caleb Williams is Caleb Williams. The point is here that if you are playing DraftKings, I teach you how to do it and I give you the best content I can with projections, player pools, stack advice, and the projections for every single game that look just like this, guys. I color code it for you so you know where to go. Anchors, darts, core plays, punts, etc. But the heart and soul of it all is my Discord link dub club, which is the live stream, guys. And I literally do that live stream five days a week, Sundays now as well, which means six days a week. So go to the gold package. And the reason it's a long-winded thing today, but I do have a discount for you guys who are new to the channel, or maybe you're on the fence and you're like, bro, let me join. The guy knows what's up. I give you a discount. It's new 15 promo code apply. It's for new users. You'll get in for $14.99 your first month. I'm literally giving it away. I don't care what anyone says. Other Twitter cappers are charging $150 a month via winnable and everything else. I am doing this for $25 a month, okay, which I don't even get all of. And then I'm giving you guys a chance to get in and try it out for $15. That's literally two cups of coffee at any coffee shop. I don't care where you go. A latte, two of them. And I promise you guys, ask people in the content comments if you're not convinced, if I can't sell you on it, which the reason I push it is because I believe in what I'm doing. I'm not going to get it right every day, but I promise you, I will teach you how to get it right. You will be way better off with me than you will be on your own. I will mentor you the best I can and help you out the best I can. Change your thinking habits about this entire thing and you will be better at playing the game within the game. And I will turn you into a long-term winning player and a thinking player. Ask them in the comments. Again, we don't win every night and that's not to be expected. But overall, in the long run, you will be a winner. And more importantly, you will have be putting yourself in a position to win because I teach the solid fundamental. That's promo code NEW15. Get in the mix, guys. The live stream will be a banger today like always. I mean, we had so much fun in the live stream. When was it? Thursday night or Friday night when we were sweating Otani? Hold on real quick. I almost forgot. I got to bring this up, man. This was made on the live stream. I posted it. Walker. When was this? Thursday night. Walker. I was. We were on live the whole time sweating it. Walker, Manny, Lamb, Wandell, and Shohei Otani. He needed to get up one more time and there was like four batters in front of him it was the last inning last bat he got he not only did he get up but he ended up hitting a double I think and he absolutely crushed it for us it was 35 to win 350 a heck of a sweat it was I recorded my live reaction because I kind of knew he was going to cash I just felt it so I was like let me record this because it's going to be amazing and I'm going to put a short video together with it but that was a fun night okay people and at the end of the day if you're not having fun with this then you can throw it all in the trash because you want to have a fun community that you can sweat it out with. That's what the whole thing is. That's my primary focus, giving people a community where they can have fun in, in a normal environment. But on a, in addition to that, teaching them how to win. Now let's continue the cook and see what else we got. So we talked about Hill. As I told you guys, Hill's line is moving in real time. 51, 53. Now it's at 54. We got that combo in, right? Him and D-Hop. I made my case for that. I talked about Myers. Now, what else do we got? Well, there's another thing right now that I think is being undervalued, and that is Kenneth Walker's fantasy score. Where are you at, sir? Did they pull it? I think they might have pulled it. They bumped it. I got Kenneth Walker the third at 10.5 fantasy score. Now, if you're in the Discord, you would have already had it with the slip that I posted for it, in addition to the Myers Goblin. But here we go. He's now at 11, so now you have to make the decision. Here's the thing, okay? Forget January 7th, because that's last season. Now, look at his up upside. This is all that matters. His upside, folks. 18.9 fantasy score against Denver Broncos. You saw what Denver was able to do to Brees Hall, right? They shut him down. I had the Denver defense yesterday in my main lineup on DraftKings, which helped me get to the top. They're a crispy, slow-paced defense. Now, they're playing the Lions. Points should be scored. Kenneth Walker, if he's 100% healthy, this is all barring him healthy, no limitations tonight. You have to have exposure to his fantasy score. He has touchdown upside. He has receiving upside. The man chucks the man cooks and he runs and 12 and a half rush attempts as well is something that you need to get behind. I'm not worried about Charbonnet. I know he's good too. Trust me. But if Kenneth Walker is going to be unrestricted tonight, these are two things that I 100% want exposure to even with the bump. His upside is just too big. Okay. I'm telling you guys, he just has too much upside. 
Now, if we go back to DG, we can price it out right away. And you see over 12 and a half rush attempts, it's minus 120, minus 130. It's 13 and a half. That signals to me it's probably going to get bumped. His fantasy score at 11, it's pretty much 50 50. It's probably going to either go back down or get bumped. I'm telling you the priority is attempts and his fantasy score, both of them are in the mix. Now, I personally have him projected for 12.4 attempts and 11 fantasy points. So it's going to be close. But remember, data models are going off of last season stats because he's only played one ge game this season. So it, it is what it is. We're going to have to wait and see. But I'm telling you guys, we want to buy low and sell high. And right now, I think this is the lowest his fantasy line is ever going to be. Same thing with his rush attempts. If you look at all of 2024, well, excuse me, all of 2023, he's gone over 9 of 15, okay? It's very rare that they don't run the football with this guy. Now, you can see Detroit doesn't give you a good matchup, which is why the line Line is deflated okay I will give you that the Lions are not allowing rushing yards and the one game they did play he didn't even come close but his fantasy score isn't his rush yards he can literally get touchdowns receiving yards whatever as you can see he didn't get a lot of rush yards in that game but he did get fantasy points and his fantasy points is my primary target y'all okay period that is my primary target 10 and a half if you can find it and then secondary would be his rush attempts at 12.5 either one of those are fine now let me see if there's one more that i can find for you guys while i'm here since it is third and yarn and i think something that you're gonna want to do is maybe take geno smith over two and a half rush attempts okay remember quarterbacks are forced to rush if the pocket collapses they sometimes can draw up other plays specifically designed but if the pocket collapses and there's no way to go he might tuck and run geno does have a little bit of leg action he does tuck and run pause but you can see the last time they played which again doesn't really mean much to me he did get three rush attempts but if you look at 2024 the three games two five four he's definitely running more this season than last he's on pace to anyways you can see seven of 15 now another thing you can see is that they're passing more often than not which means that if the pocket does collapse he's more incentivized to tuck and run which means they have a higher pass rate so 60 percent of the time he's going to be throwing which means there is a chance he can tuck and run so i do think those attempts are in play absolutely at two and a half again it's going to be sweaty for sure in fact let me price it real quick they probably have it juiced under oh actually it's being Okay, minus 130 to go over. Yeah, whatever. All right, that's something you could have exposure to. But then the last thing that I want to talk about, and I, I shouldn't even be going this far detail before I transition to DraftKings. This video is going to be forever long. So make sure you smash that like button and make sure you check out the Dub Club with code NEW15. Get your first month for $14.99. We want to talk about Willy Wonka and we want to talk about Huntley, okay? Both of these QBs hot garbage, in my opinion, until I'm proven otherwise. Captain Crush is a hard sell. Now, I do think if Miami can get it clicking that he's going to be forced to throw and 30 pass attempts, I do think is a little low. So if you want to take a shot on this, I think it's fine. And then remember, Huntley is unknown territory and I like to embrace the unknown. So Huntley, if you can find him at 16.5 pass completions, I think that's absolutely fine. And maybe even possibly 13 and a half fantasy. I can't really pull the trigger on that though. So we'll leave that alone. But Willie, his pass attempts and or his rush yards at 15.5, baby. Total gut call. You can see everything for Willie's being juiced under for good reason. He's not good. Under 15 and a half, it's 14 and a half on other books. Pass attempts under 30, it's 29 and a half on other books. That's why I'm saying, y'all, it's a total gut call. It's a total gamble. I just wanted to throw that out there because I will have slight snidge exposure to it. Same thing with Hunt Huntley's pass completions, okay? Now, remember, guys, for new members, you can you can go to CaptainCrush.net, click the gold package. It's new 15, all lowercase. You'll get in for 14 dollars if you're unsure now's the time to get in the mix ask somebody in the comments let them know i hope you guys have a good week four i hope you win your fantasy contest i hope you crush it all and i hope i crush it all too here's the salute good luck in all your contests and as always my brothers and sisters in christ let's crush